Good morning, good morning, hallelujah, we are in God's house, uh, the sun is shining out there, but it's more importantly that the son of God is arising in your hearts and here, so we are so excited about being in his house, about what God is doing, um, uh, words are being spoken to, uh, there are, have been healings, God is moving, and I am so excited, I, I I can't exuberate enough, just as David did, that I was so glad when they said, go unto the house of the Lord. So I'm excited that y'all are all here. Somebody asked me this morning, do you wake up like that? Does your husband wake up like that? No, Jason does not. <laughs> but we, is, is in his presence is the fullness of joy. So, and we know that when we come in, we are blessed. But how much more abundantly are we blessed when we leave this house? Okay, this is a house that stands on the word of God. This is a house that has leadership that equips us, the saints, because it says the saints do the works of the ministry. He just dresses us with the good word so we're equipped and prepared. So I hope you guys are ready for an incredible word this morning. I have two scriptures that I'm going to open up with this morning. Psalms 145.18, and it says, The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. And then Psalm 73, verse 23, 24, nevertheless, God is speaking to somebody this morning. Nevertheless, I am continually with you. You hold my right hand. You guide me with your counsel. And afterwards, you, Lord, receive the glory. So this morning, as we gather together, we are lifting up his name and knowing that he is in this house. His presence is here. In his presence is the fullness of joy. With his love, it pushes back all darkness. We are covered in his love this morning. So let's rejoice together as brothers and sisters, glorifying his holy name. Father God, we thank you you for this incredible honor and opportunity to come into your house, to come into your presence, Father God, to set our eyes upon you, to be refreshed, to be renewed, to be equipped, Father God. Thank you for your grace, Father God, that empowers us to be who you've called us to be, to do what you've called us to do, and just raise your name up in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Come on, let's praise the Lord this morning. Amen. Let's give him our highest praise. Great in expectation, desperate for revelation. We want to see your will be done. Give us a glimpse of glory, a new and a fresh outpouring. We want to see revival come. Our hearts are open wide. Lord, fill us with your fire. Come move like a rushing wind and sweep over this church again. Stop your kingdom. Faith will arise right here, right now. Break every chain and shackle. Make every lie unravel. We lift you high and walls fall down. Our hearts are open wide. Lord, fill us with your fire. Come move. Oh my God. 
God's going to move in what signs and wonders and miracles, amen. He's going to do some breakthroughs this morning. Move in power, wonders, signs and miracles. In your presence, nothing is impossible. Move in power, wonders, signs and miracles. In your presence, nothing is impossible. Move in power, wonders, signs and miracles. In your presence, nothing is impossible. Move in power, wonders, signs and miracles. In your presence, nothing is impossible. Come on, let's lift him up this morning. Let's give him our highest praise. And he is going to move in a mighty way, amen. Like a rushing wind and sweep over this church again. As we know, you are all you say you are. Come move, change the atmosphere till all of heaven meets us here. And do, do what you want to do. Come move, like a rushing wind, and sweep over this church again. As we know, you are all you say you are. Come move, change the atmosphere till all of heaven beats us. Do, do what you want to do. Come move, and do what you want to do. Come on, isn't it great to be in the house of the Lord this morning? When we're in his house, his presence is here. Where we get to come in here, we get to sing, we can dance, and we can shout. Isn't it great that we get to come in here and we can just rejoice freely in his name? Amen? Amen. Can we sing this song this morning? Can we give him our highest praise? Can we come here with a joyful heart? Amen? In the coldest night, you are my joy, oh, you are my comfort, my guide, my peace, you have all power and authority, oh, you tear down strongholds of the enemy, your holy fire is falling Holy fire is falling on me. You are the truth, the life, and the way. You are the truth, the life, and the way. So I will sing, oh, open the sea, and I will go through. Shouting and dancing with joy in your presence. And I will jump, 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 jump in the presence of God. And I will dance, 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 dance in the presence of God. And I will shout, 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 shout in the presence of God. I will run, 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 run in the presence of God. Come on. We can do these things in his house this morning. We can rejoice, amen. So I will sing, oh, open the sea. And I will go through shouting and dancing with joy in your presence. So I will sing, oh, open the sea, and I will go through, shouting and dancing with joy in your presence. Jump, 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 jump in the presence of God, and I 
will dance, 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 dance in the presence of God. And I will shout, 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 shout in the presence of God. And I will run, 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 run in the presence of God. So I will sing, oh, open the sea. And I will go through shouting and dancing with joy in your presence. It's great to be in his presence, where two or more are gathered in his name. He is here, amen. We get to have the power that is in his name, and that's due all his glory. Where two or more are gathered in his name, he is there. run to him in faith he is there there is power in the name of jesus there is power power in his name there is power in the name of jesus there is power power in us now he is here oh the word has come to silence every doubt he is here there is power in the name of jesus there is power power in his name power in the name of Jesus. There is power, power in his name. Come on. His name is above all things. His name can set captives free. His name can break the chains off of someone's oppression. Amen. One name, one name can say, one name breaks every chain. One name, always, one name, Jesus. One name, one name remains, one name, we will proclaim. One name, always, one name. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power, power in his name. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power, power in his name. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power, power in his name. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power, power in his name. Yeah. Oh, there's power in his name. Oh, there's power in his name. Come on, let's lift our hands up this morning. Let's rejoice in all things. All right. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. How many of y'all heard the last week's message? What was, that, what was that empowering word that we had? Emphasize empowering. That same resurrection power that brought Jesus Christ back from the dead is in each and every one of us. And if you did not hear that incredible message and make it your own, it is available on our app. <laughs> 
But there's something here. Um, uh, I, I think we can do this again. Pastor, can we do that song again? And, and just really emphasize that as you declare, where's that power coming from? Where, where can we have that the things and be equipped to handle everything that is going to come against us, okay? When you acknowledge that Jesus Christ was your Lord and Savior, you were then drafted into the army of God, okay? Which means that we got some fighting to do and some declaration. Our prayer services have been absolutely life-changing, okay? Pulling down strongholds, taking this city that God had given these two pastors a vision for over 34 years ago, okay? It is amazing that God is here. And guess what? Each and every one of you can take part in these great works that God's doing in this city at this time. So as we go back and we sing this song and we're saying, in the name of Jesus, there is power. I want you to envision, just like Joshua did, every step you take is taken for the Lord. Let's go. Praise the mighty Lord. Where two or more are gathered in his name, he is there oh. for all who come, who run to him in faith. He is there. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power, power in his name. There is power. In the name of Jesus, there is power, power in his name. No fear, no lie can stand against us now. He is here. Whoa, the word has come to silence every doubt. He is here. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power, power in his name. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power, power in his name. Come on, let's declare it this morning that there is power in his name, that he will break the chain, and that we can rejoice in the victory, amen? One name, one name can save, one name breaks every chain, one name always, one name Jesus, one name, one name remains, one name we will proclaim, one name Always one name, there is power in the name of Jesus. There is power, power in his name. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power, power in his name. There is power. In the name of Jesus, there is power, power in his name. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power, power in his name. Oh, there's power in his name. great to be in the house of the Lord where we get to come in and rejoice and give him our highest praise. It's just amazing to be 
in his presence. And we get to stand on his word. We get to stand and proclaim his glory in this place. Can we sing this song this morning? Can we sing and can we be people that are moving in his presence? Amen. communion table, first Sunday every month we take communion. Uh, how many are joining the kids up here and, and uh, watching yeah. them? Yeah. If nothing else, a good comic relief. I mean, yeah. praise the Lord. I, I was watching the kids this morning and, 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 and God spoke to me. And I noticed how they're all lining up and the ladies are signaling and, and most of them are doing what they're told. But anyway, and he says, he says, this is the beginning. And I thought to myself, this is the beginning. He said, this is the beginning of obedience. 
he says, so when they grow older, he says, they learn how to obey the word of the Lord. Amen. I said, God, huh, that's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. I, I thought that was a good word. Amen. Anyway, praise the Lord. So, so the, 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 the Bible does say, train a child in the ways they'll go. When they get old, they won't depart from it. Well, God, is, what, what do we do? We're training our children in obedience so they will recognize the voice of the Lord and obey that. How many can recognize God working and don't, don't just do their own thing anyway? Praise the Lord. But there, anyway, I think it's part of the obedience. Uh, I wish I had this about 40 Years, 50 years ago. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Anyway, <laughs> hallelujah. We have communion this morning, and this is our communion tables. You've had me share several different times. We, this is, we've taken the idea of a communion table from the Passover. I believe it describes uh, communion the best because that's what Jesus used. And uh, he, took the, he took a portion, he took a portion of the com communion uh, of the Passover and we, call, we set up what we call communion. The Passover table, there were five different chalices that talk about the five things in the book of Exodus. There, there talks about the promises of God. And I shared with you before that each one of those five, uh, they're up on the screen if you want to copy down, but the, the five, uh, I see Jesus in all five of them. Uh, so I kind of incorporated it because I, I do see the Lord. Uh, how many uh, remembrance? Uh, we do this in remembrance of who? Him. Praise the Lord. Uh, uh, salvation. Did Jesus give us salvation? Absolutely. Uh, redemption. Redemption is also in that word in, 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 uh, in Exodus 6. Uh, and in nationhood. And nationhood is we're part and citizens of the kingdom of God. Is the kingdom of God a nation? Yes, it is. It's, it, uh, it has a headship, has a, you know, which is Jesus the king. Praise the Lord. In, in the middle of the table, uh, we put the I don't know what they call this in Hebrew. Um, I know what it says in Hebrew on top here. It says matzah. So that gives you a clue what's inside. Praise the Lord. Anyway, but there's three, three pouches. The three pouches are what they, in Jewish custom, they put a, a, a matzah in each one. But when they draw out, they only draw out the middle matzah and partake of that. Uh, the middle matzah, well, of course, in Jew, Jewish custom, it, the three Pockets starting from the top to the bottom starts with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So they Jake pull out. I kind of look at it in a Christian light, and I see Father, Son, Holy Spirit. The Son being the middle masa anyway, so this was, is, is brought out. At the end of the table, this is what is always set out every Jewish household during Passover. This is set up. By the way, Passover is a celebrative time. It, it took Christian hierarchy and religion to, to dumb it down to uh, just a, a little thing that we're very solemn and we come and repent of and very sad about. But Jesus was, was sad about going to the cross, but he get, did it willingly. He prayed the night before. But the Passover itself is very celebratory because it talks about, the Passover talks about freedom. And what Jesus was going to do on that Passover, because the Passover points to Jesus, by the way, if you didn't figure that out. But, the, but what Jesus was about to do is about to set us free. Going to the cross and paying the price sets us free. Shouldn't we be happy about freedom? Yes. Amen. We should be. Amen. And freedom from our sins, freedom from bondages. So this is a time, uh, uh, I say in the church, this is a time of celebratory where we should celebrate what Christ has done. Jesus gave us a command. He said, do this. You know, take of this bread, take of this wine. He didn't partake of it himself, but he partook of everything else on the Passover. Why didn't Jesus partake of it himself? Because he would have fulfilled it, and he wanted to keep it ongoing. He wanted to keep it ongoing because he gave it, he gave it with a promise to his disciples. He said, keep on doing this. It's ongoing. We do this. He said, as often as you do this. He didn't say how often. He said, as often as you do that. Religion has put a time on it, but, but God did not. And, uh, but he said, do this in remembrance of me. But he said, when we come and come into his presence in his glory, he will then sit down and partake. Hallelujah. What does that mean? That means it's all going to be fulfilled <laughs> and, 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 and be completed. Amen? Amen. So what, what is the communion table? What does it represent? What are we doing in this whole thing? It's not just juice and cracker time. What are we doing? Well, what we're doing is we're honoring the resurrection power that raised Christ from the dead, yes. that now dwells in us, it says according, yes. uh, according to Romans, okay, that dwells in us, and then we, yes. through that resurrection power, we spread the news to other people, 
and we make a difference in changing this earth here. Uh, religion might have taught you that what you do is you just get saved so God can whisk you out of here. Well, the, regardless of which eschatology you want to believe, guess what all the eschatologies have is doing, coming back here. <laughs> to rule and reign with Christ for a thousand years is what about all the eschatologies. It's just when that happens, the eschatologies are, are not in alignment. But the fact is that it's going to happen. So what is Christ doing us? He says within us, he says, we've been made kings and priests through that resurrection power. Amen. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in us. The same spirit, not a different spirit, the same spirit that dwelt, raised Jesus from the dead dwells in us. Think about that. When we sit down and we take communion, which is a covenant meal, I don't try to get into that part of it, but the, uh, a covenant meal, we are re being reminded of the resurrection power that dwells in us. And we are thanking the Lord for that, for making the difference in our life. And that's what makes the difference. Only Jesus does make the difference in our life. Praise the Lord. And uh, so, amen. And by the way, because Jesus made the sacrifice, does he not have a right to command our life? Mm. So basically, uh, the remembrance and um, the, the, the salvation and the redemption, we're yielding to that uh, truth in the, in the scripture. So we're yielding to him uh, in the, through, this, uh, through the communion. Praise the Lord. All right. Um, if you need a healing in your body, there's two elements to communion. The only sacrament in the church has two elements. This is only for demonstration. Uh, you're going to get a clean, clean one, so it's not going to have my hands all over. So this isn't what we're going to eat. But uh, uh, this is set out for the Messiah. When the disciples set up the room, uh, they would do this traditionally for, for, for generation to generation. They set this place out. Here's the cup. Here's the place. Nobody drank of this cup. Nobody ate of this matzah because this was set out for the Messiah. Uh, and, and they're looking for the Messiah. When Jesus walks in a room, guess where he sits? And guess which matzah he picks up, or the unleavened bread that he picks up? This one. Guess which one he breaks and hands it to his disciples? This one. Guess which cup he picks up? This one. Guess which cup he passes to his disciples? This one. The one that nobody touched for generations. Jesus was making a bold statement to his disciples. Listen, this is my body. This is my blood. This is my spot. And I'm giving it to you. What, what, what does he do in that, the revelation of that whole thing? What is that? He's bringing us into the communion of him. He's bringing that resurrection power that dwells in us is now being, and we're being invited and ushered in, if you will, uh, to the very presence of God. And the presence makes the difference. It is not a religious format. We're not waiting for Jesus to come back. Jesus is here now. He said, we're two or three gather in my name. My spirit is in the midst of the gather now. We are celebrating the now of Jesus and the, his dimension right now, not of what's coming. Amen. He is coming back too, but, but, uh, and we're going someplace too. But the fact is what we're celebrating is we got a lot to do before that happens. But <laughs> we need the resurrected power within us to, to get through sometimes, don't we? Praise the Lord. Okay. Jesus took this matzah and he broke it. He said, this is my body. This is the body that went to the whipping post. This is what Isaiah said, by his stripes we are healed. He said that he took the beating Amen. for our physical body healing. Matthew says it this way. Matthew 8, 17 says himself, talking about Jesus, bore our sicknesses and carried our diseases. Yes. When did he do that? At the whipping post. Amen. During the crucifixion at the whipping post. So he, he said, take, eat. And I'll, I'll, I'll read the scripture in a minute, but it's what he, he passed around to his disciples. Then he picked up this. Got, they call it, in a Passover, they call it the Elijah cup. Because some Jews believe that the Elijah is going to be the one that's coming back because it, he, he, wasn't, uh, he didn't die. He was, he was taken up. And so was Moses. So they have a thing. But Jesus came in and he picked up the Elijah cup and passed it around. He said, this is my blood, which is given for you. Now, this, now what, would, what do we have? We have the redemption of Christ that brings us into him. And what Jesus did in his, in his earthly walk here for three and a half years, he was demonstrating the love of the Father. Amen. And what Jesus did, he passes on. Now we do have a relationship with the Heavenly Father. Jesus said this to his disciples, which says it to all of us. He said this, he says, In that day ask of me nothing, but ask my Father in my name, and it shall be given you. In that day ask me nothing, 
Amen. Amen. Ask, the, ask the Father. What did he do? He redirected all the prayers, all the things that we do. He redirected to the Father in his name. The authority comes through the name. The resurrection authority comes through the name of Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, amen. So, this is, so I, let me encourage you this morning, if you need a healing in your body, let's t t believe it during communion. Yes. Take the matzah yourself. And we'll, 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 we'll pray over it, but that means we'll take it and say, yes, I believe for healing. What we do on, on our uh, harp and bowl nights, our prayer nights, is we take, we have communion, all the prayer warriors have communion. And what we do, we pick up the moss and we say, you know, we're going to do an intercessory thing here. I'm believing right now as we take partaking of, this, of the body of Christ, I'm believing for everybody that needs a miracle right now, whether they're walking, watching live stream or whatever. Anybody needing a miracle healing, we stand with them. And we believe by Jesus' stripes you were healed. This has, this has purpose and meaning. Yes. It's not just a religious ceremony. Praise the Lord. And uh, it, we do it a, a great injustice when we dummy down the things of Christ and turn them into religion. Okay, they need to be brought back, be elevated again as something important to our lives and, and, and walk out that way. Praise the Lord. Don't let me get preaching. Amen. Praise the Lord. So I'm ready for communion this morning. Now everything on, the, on this is pretty much Jewish except that. <laughs> This is not Jewish, it has a cross on it, but this is, this is the one Christian. Well, the whole table really is just, these are just uh, uh, symbols. I, I, I love that uh, where the Passover came from because it came out of the book of Exodus. You remember the story when they were uh, it, uh, being ready to be released. All the plagues had been poured out in Egypt, they've been re released. So the, the families are sitting together and they, they've got the, the lamb, and they're, they're having this last meal, and they're doing it fully clothed because it's going, they're, they're, they eat this meal in haste. Anything left over is to be put into the fire and burned, and they're, they're leaving the next morning. And what happens is they took the blood from that sacrifice, and they put it on the doorpost. Blood-soaked wood. Sound familiar? Crucifixion. Hallelujah. But they put the blood on the doorpost, and the death angel would pass by them and not visit their home. And this is what they just, they waited for the next morning for freedom. They were waiting for the freedom of God. And they were sitting waiting. And this is what, it, this, is what this Passover meant to the Jewish people. Jesus took this portion and signed it to himself. Well, it was already assigned to himself, but he was, it, it meant for himself. So as you partake this morning of the communion, I want you to remember the things that Christ has said. We do this as often as you do this, but do this in remembrance of him. Amen. And what he's done. Let's remember the resurrection. Let's remember the power. Let's remember the things, uh, the call that he has upon our life. Let's remember those things. Praise the Lord. In a world that seems to be in turmoil, let's remember what Christ has done. Amen. Praise the Lord. Ushers. Hallelujah. And I am taking this out of the middle pouch. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And you see our ushers. Uh, as this is being passed around, don't reach in yourself. They will pass it to you because they have uh, sterilized gloves and, you know, they're clean. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. Go ahead. <laughs> <clears throat>
God, in this morning, we believe in Jesus' name. We believe that he paid the price. Get the unpaid. Pay the price. Receive the healing this morning. We want you with our lives in Jesus. something different this morning. I normally read the scriptures here, but God just awakened me on something else. We're going to sing this song as we partake together. Amen. Amen. So watch me. I'll clue you when we get We're going to sing this song. Uh, uh, we're here Tuesday night. I'll get into it. When I get in my message, I got a, I got a special message for you this morning. But when I get into this, uh, um, I want to uh, sing this song uh, because basically what happened when, as we did this on Tuesday night, it impacted something and it moved, in the, moved some things in the spirit. I want to believe this morning that as we partake communion, this is going. To, this song is going to impact not just you sitting here, uh, uh, but the fourteen thousand views or more we see we have on our on our live stream and, and impact somebody this morning. So I'm just listening. I'm just obeying the Lord here. This is on unscripted. <laughs> it's most of the stuff is that we have here. Praise the Lord. Go ahead. Let's sing this song. And we'll pray. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm not a warrior, I'm too afraid to lose. Thank you, Jesus. I feel unqualified for what you're calling me to do. Lord, you paid the price for our Lord, healing this morning. Strength. Let's partake together no the body of Christ this morning. Because broken believe. people are exactly who you use. So give me faith like Daniel Thank you, Jesus. in the lion's day. Healing in the name of Christ. Healing right now. Moses in the Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Boldness in the name of the Lord. You took a we thank you for the blood that you shed for us, Lord. We thank you for the presence so back I'm to the heart. Trust you we thank you, Lord, for buying us back. We thank you, Father, for forgiving our sins. We thank you for making us whole in the name of Jesus. Let's partake together the blood of Christ this morning. I'm a champion, claiming your victory. So give me faith like Daniel in the lion's den. Give me hope like Moses Come on, sing it to the Lord this morning. Make this your prayer. Give me a heart like David, Lord, be my defense. So I can face my giants with confidence. Praise the Lord. I'm going to sing and shout and shake the wall. Won't stop until I see them fall. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to stand up, step Jesus. out when you call. Jesus, Jesus. I see this I'm morning I see marriage is being healed. The wall. In the name Won't of Jesus. Relationships being restored. In the name of Jesus. I see the power of God call. moving this morning. Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Move it on your behalf. Making a way where there doesn't seem to be a way right now, but God is making a way. Hallelujah. Trust and be obedient in Jesus' name for what he's called you to do. Praise the Lord. I see an army of God rising up in this hour that will give themselves to intercession, to praying, and pulling down strongholds. We see it this morning, Lord, in the name of Jesus, with the eye of faith. We see what you're showing us, Father God. Let us see this morning what you see. Let us live in the perspective that you let us live in, Father God, and give you praise this morning. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, be my defense, so I can face my giants with confidence. Thank you, Jesus. I'll face my giants with confidence. Courage and boldness. Yes. Courage and boldness be released upon us this morning. Courage and boldness to stand up for the things of God. 
courage and boldness to follow after the things of God this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we give you the praise. We hold your name up above every name in the name of Jesus. At your name, at the sound of your name, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess. Father, we come in agreement this morning with the Spirit of God. Father, empower us to carry out your will in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father God. We are so blessed that you co-labor with us, Lord, but let us not forget it is your plan that we are co-laboring with. You are not co-laboring with our plan. But, Father God, we submit ourselves to you this morning, and we thank you, Father God, for what you've given us. We thank you for the price that you paid for us in Jesus' name. If we shout this for all eternity, we'll never come to the end of the goodness that you have given us. If we shout this out to all e for all eternity, we'll never come up to the depths and the breadth of what you have given us and what you have done and what you have paid for us. Well, Father God, we are eternally grateful, and we lift up your name above every name this morning in the name of Jesus. And at the name of Jesus, we possess the power of the Holy Spirit, which is a resurrection power this morning. We have the power to accomplish all that you have accomplished. Let, let the world drag us down or, or, or suck out the life in the name of Jesus, but we stand this morning in the power of God to do the impossible, Father God, that you have called us to do because everything you've called us to do is impossible to our, in our standards. But Lord, help us to live with the perspective that you have given, that you live in, Father God. Help us to see what you see. Help us to say what you are saying this morning. Help us to be what you've called us to be, everything that you've called us to be without reservation this morning. In Jesus' mighty name, and all the church said... Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Come on, give him a, just give him a praise for a minute. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. In el nombre de Jesús. <laughs> for our Spanish people in the back. <laughs> And don't ask for a whole dialect. Praise the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Man, isn't it great to be in the house of the Lord this morning? You can, you can take a seat. We are going to go into our announcements. Um, it's just amazing what God is doing in this church. Amen. It's just miracles are breaking forth. His power and presence are here. And um, we like to announce our church app. Um, and it's a great um, app. You can find it on the Apple Store or you can get it through Google Play. And we have in the app our prayer and our praise button. These two buttons are very important because if you go into that app, you select that prayer button and submit your prayer request, we will pray for you and we will pray until you hear an answer or you get your answer to your prayer. And when you get that answer, go back into the app and hit the praise button so we can rejoice that God has done something in your life. And you can also find pastor's messages on different platforms such as podcast, YouTube, our website, and um, it's just amazing. We also have our CWC Kids, which you can find on Facebook and on YouTube. Um, it's just amazing that the kids are able to act out these Bible stories and to learn about God's Word in a unique way. Um, and now I will turn it over to Josiah for our weekly schedule of Mondays. That's me. Monday nights here in our church in our war room at 7 p.m. we have our men's meeting. We invite all you men to come out and join us and build yourselves up in the most holy faith and fellowship together with your brothers in Christ. And now we turn it over to Raphael. Hello, hello. All right, Tuesday here in our sanctuary uh, at 6 p.m. is our warfare praise. It's just, it was really amazing. We come as a family. Just be thankful and just, just grace. That, and just thank God for all the grace he's given us and all the blessings that, that he's given us. And with that, we pass it on to Gina for the women's meeting. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Anywho, any, so uh, good morning, everybody. So on Thursdays, we have our women's Bible study. And like I say every week, God is doing something. And I'm here for it, and I'm excited, and I'm just, um, it's just, He's just planting words, and he's, he's just dropping the seed in. We're going to see how it blossoms and how it continues to, to develop. So come on out. We'd love to have you. All right, back to y'all now. And for Friday, we have our um, movie nights here at CWC in our sanctuary, which it's going to be April 12th, and we will premiere season four, episode three of The Chosen. Yes, this Friday's the, the, the 12th. Yes. 
No, it's all good. Yeah, see, I, it's like you got to say this Friday. You can't say the date because I can. I, I don't even know if tomorrow's date. So, so yeah, we all we all have our. Whoop. Okay, so but it's great. You can come in here. Um, the it's just really awesome and empowering. Um, you can invite your friends. Um, the really special thing about this is that we have access to the chosen, and um, we can watch it here in the churches. And the only other way you can watch it is in the movie theater. So you get to come in here and you get to participate with us and watch something that is not really available to the public other than to the churches that are able to access the system and to be able to view it other than the movie theater. So we invite you to come out. You can invite your friends. It's a great way to spend your Friday night. And now we will go into our Saturdays, which are Harp and Bowl. And um, that's here in our sanctuary as well at 6 p.m. And God is just moving. He's, we are seeing miracles. We're seeing strongholds broken down. And it, God is just moving in our city, and he is moving in this church. And it's just a great way that we get to prepare ourselves to come into the Sunday morning service at 10 a.m. We start with our um, Sunday um, praise and worship, and then we will go into pastor's message, which it will be time boldly and just, I mean, every week it's just something, and it impacts not only just my life, but I've seen it impact other people's lives, that it is just moving in a strong and powerful way. And um, now we will go into our tithes and offerings, which now we have a new updated system. We are transitioning from Cash App to a new program that um, you can see, and a QR code will appear on your screen, um, either on live stream or you can have it in our church. We also have it in our bulletin. And um, with this new unique QR code app, um, you can register or not register. You can give as a gift. But you, um, with this app, we are able to give internationally, and we have different forms of currency that will be taken through this app. So it's just great, and we're moving, and we're moving spiritually. And um, for those who do not have this, which, well, it's, this app is available to everyone, but you can still, if you like to, give um, through the mail, which our address is 5580 McDonald Avenue, Key West, Florida, zip code 33040. And today's Thai scripture is Proverbs 3, 9, and 10. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase, so your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. Father God, thank you for this giving and to give unto you with our whole hearts and to give to you our blessings in your name, in Jesus' name. Amen. Speak to my weary heart, strengthen my broken parts, lead me to your open arms. Word of truth, illuminate all these lies. The enemy speaks inside, and in freedom I will rise. Cause you call me out from the grave, so I can live like I've been changed. There is a new song in my soul.
Amen. Good to have everybody here this morning. Praise the Lord. Um, how many came to hear a word this morning? Amen. Well, I've got a couple of them. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Um, last week, let's see, no, it wasn't last week, it was a couple weeks ago. It was Palm Sunday. I was sitting in my office and preparing, and of course my mind was all on Palm Sunday. And I'm going over the message in my head and sitting in my office before the service. Yeah, thank you. And, um, and, and all of a sudden, God spoke a word to me, and it had nothing to do with Palm Sunday. I was kind of disappointed because I was looking for a new revelation. But anyway, uh, what he shared with me and what he said to me is becoming my title this morning. I'm going to elaborate more on it. Um, but what he said to me, he said, seven trumpets. And um, I, I know the meaning. I know the meaning. So I was in sitting in my office and in front of my computer uh, and I called it up. I went in, into my search on my Bible and uh, on my computer and I typed in uh, seven trumpets. And the first thing that comes up is Joshua 6. And see, a lot, how many know that when, when we hear a word from the Lord, a lot of times we hear parts. We know in part, we prophesy in part, we look through a glass darkly. So God doesn't, if you're waiting for God to lay out the whole plan, uh, from step one to step two, you're going to be disappointed. <laughs> uh, but there's different ways that he, he speaks to us. So I immediately called up the, the scripture. And what God showed me was he was showing me uh, Joshua going around the city of Jericho and that whole story there. Well, that led into another study and another study. And uh, so basically I've been, I've been seeing this. Uh, since then, oh, good, good graphics, praise the Lord. Uh, Jim, you can fix the noise in this mic or whatever. Um, uh, we get, if you notice that since then, we got seven shofars up there, or trumpets, with the uh, Hebrew word for trumpet is shofar. But we got something about seven trumpets. So I want to I read in the book of Joshua. Now, it, it, l- let me make something clear at the beginning. What God was speaking to me was not the Revelation 8 2 trumpets. Otherwise, we could all run and hide right now. <laughs> if you know that story in the book of Revelation, there's seven angels with seven trumpets, and each one blew a trumpet, began a, a plague of judgment upon the earth. Uh, that's not what we're talking about here. However, uh, Joshua, now, I mean, no, Joshua took over from Moses. It was another generation. He took the next generation, and where he was, where he was camped was on the east side of, of the Jordan, and then remember that God split open the Jordan River, and he walked across. Well, what, what uh, um, uh, Joshua did was something unusual. But what he did, he took a, a, a member from each tribe of Israel, which would be 12 of them, and he lined them up across the, the, the river where, it was, where God had split it open. So they're standing in the split, so to speak. And they're standing there as the people are coming down and filing, going from the east side of the Jordan to the west side of the Jordan, which is entering into the promise. So it's the first first entry place into the promised land. You got that. Before they came out, what happened was before they, uh, uh, they God sealed it back up, Joshua told, his, told the men in there, everybody pick up a stone. So from the bottom of the riverbed, they picked up a stone, they walked it across, and they piled the stones on the other side, which would be the side of the promise. Okay, you follow me so far? And it made an altar, and that altar was to stand as a reminder of what God had delivered them out of and what God had brought them to. And the 12 stones, of course, represented the 12 tribes of Israel. 
This was just on, uh, if you look at, at a map, uh, um, you'll find that Jericho, Jericho is still there today, by the way. Uh, Jericho is one of the oldest cities in the world, one of the oldest cities in the world. Still in, has a population of about 20,000 today compared to Key West, 24,000. So it's, just, it's a population about the size of Key West, <laughs> today's standards. Uh, but it was different back in, in, in Joshua's time. So, so Joshua comes across. What happened? They brought the Ark of the Covenant across as they're coming across the river. But something happened that never happened before. God stopped the manna. Do you remember the manna that would fall every, every, every day to, to give uh, the Israelites food in the wilderness? But we're passing now, we're not in the wilderness, we're passing from the wilderness into the promise of God. This is the promised land that God promised Abraham and his descendants. Remember that promise. So what happens, God considers now that we come over, the provision of heaven stopped. And now what we get to do is we get to labor with God. The promised land was God laying out to Abraham. It wasn't Joshua's idea. Joshua is just moving in on what the Abrahamic covenant was. So now, the, so God's advancement is this. God considered the promise, how many would consider the promised land advancement? From the wilderness? I guess so. Uh, if you've ever gone to Israel and been in the wilderness of Zin, you'd understand this is a big upgrade. <laughs> Even seven miles north of the Dead Sea where Jericho is at. Uh, it's, it's still a big upgrade from the wilderness of Zin where they came out of. But it, so they come out of that. So now they're possessing the land that has been promised for generations, have been promised to Abraham, and they're moving into that promise. The advancement, God considered the advancement now, instead of manna dropping from heaven as a, as a support system uh, from heaven to the people, now the people get to till the ground and God gets to bless them through their labors. Boy, not a whole lot of amens there. I'm telling you, I'm preaching alone this morning. I can see that. Praise the Lord. Yeah, uh-huh. That's advancement. That's advancement. Amen? Understand the co-laboring part. The promised land is what God had promised. So what happens now, the children of Israel get in on what God had promised for generations. And when they till the... Matter of fact, there's even scriptures in the Bible that God will make, God will make the, the trees produce 12 months out of the year. He'll increase their flocks. He'll increase all the things. But they have to have the planted seed first before they increase the flocks. So as soon as the Ark of the Covenant comes across, as the presence of God comes across the Jordan, there they are. He bring, All the other people come. Now they're on the other side. God closes back up the Jordan River. And now they're standing there, standing on the very promise that Moses never got to, standing on the very promise that God spoke to Abraham about. And now here they are. As far as God is concerned, they own this land. As far as God concerns today, they still own this land. There is no, uh, uh, there is no uh, exception here. This is, this is what God had commended. Even in, in ancient uh, Middle East uh, rulings, this would stand. Praise the Lord. I don't have time to get into that, but this is, this is a custom in every tribe, not just the Jewish people, but every tribe and, and, and nation in the Middle East. They recognize the ownership of generations. We don't do that here. We have a land contracts or whatever, but there they recognize the generational pass down of lands and so on and so forth and a, a family right to that uh, uh, particular land. Uh, don't let me get off the subject. Praise the Lord. So what happened is God was talking to me about the seven trumpets. Uh, there's all kinds of stuff running through my brain. But <laughs> anyway, uh, he brought me to Joshua chapter 6. Now here they come, they, come, they come across the Jordan River, as I said. They set up the, the, the altar of the pile of rocks for a memorial of what God had brought to them. They're thanking the Lord for the, for the, for the promised land that they finally made it to. Do you know what happened? is the Israelites, when, they came, when God freed them from Egypt, they begin to complain against Moses. They complained about leadership. They complained to God. They didn't like this. They didn't like that. And basically, God says he was ready to wipe them out. And Moses says, no, remember your promise to Abraham. He says, okay. He said, but these people here will never see my promise. Because of their complaining and their agitating, they will never see my promise. So what happened, you remember when he sent out the 12 spies, and I'm, I'm putting a lot into this, into this story here, but the, uh, Joshua and Caleb were the only two that saw the possibilities of God in the promised land. 
and they now are in that promised land at this point in the story. Praise the Lord. And so, so the other generation had to die off. What was that generation? That generation, we used to call it back in the old days, we used to call it the Moses generation. You know what the Moses generation is? That's just the maintaining. Just keep me maintained, that's all. I just want to just sustain me, Lord, and keep me maintained. Most of the prayers of the Moses generation was, God, bless me, Lord, I need this, I need that, I need this, I need that. Uh, Jesus becomes a storefront Santa Claus and just and gift me with everything that I need. However, the Joshua generation is the Joshua generation that goes in and possesses. Amen. Amen. Possesses the promises of God. Yes, Lord, we want more than just a sustaining. We want more than just a maintenance program. We want to go in and activate. I, I, this, this, is the, this is the message that needs to be, uh, I believe, uh, put on to the next generation. Listen, we're co-laboring with God even today. Wait a minute, Jesus paid it all. Yes, he paid it all, and he, but he paid it all for. Did Jesus come, come here to die just so you and I could go to heaven? Heaven's included, don't be afraid, but that's not the purpose he came, that's not the only purpose that he came here for. He came us to redeem us back to Father so that we would do the Father's will. What is the Father's will for this planet? Father's will wishes that none should perish but all to have eternal life. So we have a plan from God. This is what we continue on with, and this is what our responsibility is as a church and everything else. So what here, we're here for a purpose. Now you can divide that purpose up in different gifts and talk to, the New Testament talks about fivefold ministry and all the different things like that. But we are here. Otherwise, why not just get born again and think real hard and God will just whisk you out of here? To save you so you're not tempted, so you're not, you know, there's always a chance you could backslide, you know, something like that. Uh, the Bible says a backslider's heart is filled with their own ways. So there is, there is that possibility. But, but that's, no, he left us here. Why? Because we're here with the empowerment of Christ, the resurrection empowerment of Christ, not to get along in this world or survive, but to change the very atmosphere, the very presence. You see, what happens is when we bring God's heaven to earth, isn't that part of the Lord's prayer? Lord, let your will be done in the earth as it is in heaven. Isn't that part of his prayer? When we do that, we bring the realm of God. I'm getting a little bit ahead of my story, but getting that, we bring the realm of God here. When you do that enough times, you actually change the realm around you. You change the place that you live in. Amen. Amen. Now we're getting to the will and to the heart of God, aren't we? Praise the Lord. Anyway, let me get to Joshua. Uh, I start preaching. I won't read this at all. Amen. Joshua chapter 6, verse 1. You can follow along in your Bible if you want to. And verse 1 says this. It says, Now Jericho was securely shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out, none came in. And the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given you Jericho into your hands, its kings and its mighty men of valor. Anybody find that thing strange? Let me read this again. Now Jericho was securely shut up because of the children of Israel are outside the gates. None went in and none came out. They shut the gates up. They sealed the place. That's what that means. And verse 2, and the Lord said to Joshua, see, I gave you the city. <laughs> Wait a minute. My perspective, I'm outside the wall. The city's inside the wall. But you say, see, you've given me the city. But it doesn't feel like i um, get got the city. How many have ever been, been like in this position? <sighs> I know, Lord, you said I'm healed, but it, it doesn't feel like I'm healed. Uh, it still feels like I'm on the outside. But what God is saying, he's saying, listen, he said, I have given you the city. This is the, this is the realm that God lives in, and here's what I'm challenging the church to do this morning. Let's start seeing what God sees. He said, see. Exclamation point in my Bible. See, I have given Jericho into your hands and his kings and his mighty man. If you look this up in the Hebrew, that word uh, 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 given means there's a transfer happened. It's been transferred from one hand into your hands. As far as God was concerned, Joshua, you own this place. And this is the attitude I want you coming in. You own this. You're not... Wait a minute, Lord, there's 12-foot thick walls. They're having chariot races on top of the walls. Guys are laughing at us and they're throwing things at us. 
Uh, this gates are not gates of wood that we can burn down. They're gates of iron or steel. And, and, or iron, not steel, but iron gates. And they're shut up tight. And nobody's going in, nobody's coming out. How can you say that I, that I have the city, that you have given me this? Uh-huh. Now, you, we, can, we can position ourselves where Joshua looks at this thing and says, uh-hmm. What next words of God is going to make the transfer? As far as God is concerned, everything about your healing, everything about your prosperity, everything about your salvation has already been done. It doesn't matter if you feel like it, look like it, or anything else. Understand, as far as God's perspective, it is done. Jesus is not going back to the cross for you, and he's not raising up from the dead again for you or for me. He has done it. It is finished. Isn't that what Jesus said on the cross? It is finished. It is complete. Thousands of years of prophecy now are complete. So I guess what happens, the ball is now in our court? Not exactly. Not exactly. Let's read on. There's a lot to this, seven trumpets. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Matter of fact, God gave me that word, and we had only four shofars up there. Now we have seven. I got three more just because of that word. I wanted a reminder. <laughs> You probably don't realize this. We're going we're gonna to change this, these 12. Those 12 squares b- below the screen, did you see the, can you see the 12 white squares below the screen? Those are supposed to represent the stones that came out of the Jordan. But um, that's a, somebody's modern artistic version of it. We're going to change it to. Anyway, praise the Lord. I like reminders of the things that God says uh, because I can look at something tangible and say, yes, I remember when God said this. I can remember when God said that. I'll get into that part and why we do that uh, in a minute. But let's go ahead and read on. He said, and the Lord said to Joshua, see, I've given you the Jericho. Verse 3, let's pick it up in verse 3. He says, you shall march around the city, all your men of war. You shall go all around the city once. This you shall do six days. Now, God's getting very specific here, okay? Six days. And... Yeah. S- And seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark. But the seventh day you shall march around the city seven times, and the priest shall blow the trumpet, and it shall come to pass that when you make the long blast, mark that in your Bible, that's important, I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, Because there are four, basic four types of blasts on the shofar that all mean different things. Okay. Jesus, he particularly says, particularly says a long blast with the ram's horn. And when you hear the sound of the trumpet or the shofar, he said that all the people will shout with a great shout. Then the wall of the city will fall down flat and the people shall every man go straight before him. Okay, let's, let's on what wrap this up. When you pick up a shofar, what was it? where's my shofar player? Raphael, you, or, uh, Josiah, come on. Uh, uh, you can you can do all four blasts, right? Okay. If not, I'll get Raphael. I mean, I, I know somebody in this church can. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Give me everyone but the just a short version of everyone but the but the long blast. I'll get that in a minute. And then you tell us what it is. Again, okay. Go ahead and make a blast. And what is that called? Okay. I forgot the name. <laughs> Do you want help? <laughs> Elder, remember I said that. All right. What is it, Elder? Takia. Takia. Okay. <laughs> give, give us number two. <laughs> Elder? Shovel rim. Shovel Shov- Okay. Another, next one? <laughs> Too late, I already got the elevator. <laughs> Tarua. All right. Now, give me the long blast. Now, imagine that. Wow. Oh, he, he did it already. Yes. That's, 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 okay. Uh, the long version, okay. He's got the Hebrew. 
Basically, it's Jubilee. There's one blast, long blast, I use it the most in the church, is the, church, is the blast of Jubilee. This was a blast. Thank you, Josiah. You did a good job. Praise the Lord. Josiah. Amen. Um, basically, this is what God was saying. He was saying, okay, he says, and it shall come to pass that when you make the long blast with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people will shout. At that sound, all the people will shout. Now, I mentioned the word Jubilee. Why? That is a sound of jubilee. God is insane. Now, the other, the other uh, uh, blast, there was three other blasts that we have uh, mean different things. Some of them mean charge, some mean uh, engage. They're all different, different signals, and, and, and that's beside the point. Elder Skip can give you all that if you, wanna, if you want for your, for your notes. But the fact is, the jubilee, he said, a long blast. When he said long blast, it is jubilee in Hebrew, and what it means, it means you have been set free. In Jubilee, I'll go real quick, if you don't know what Jubilee is. In the Hebrew calendar, there's a thing called the Shemitah. Shemitah is seven years. When you've completed seven Shemitahs, that's seven times seven is 49, on the 50th year, it is a Jubilee year. What it means is they get on the bike and they blow this Jubilee uh, uh, sound, and everybody hears this. If you're a person who lost their property because you didn't have enough money. It was in your family, but you lost their property because of debts. They all went back, you got your house back. Uh, if, you, if you owed money, which would put you in slavery or servant to, servanthood to another person, that's what slavery was in Bible time, was paying off a debt. At that sound of that horn, your debt is automatically paid in full. You could walk off the property. You're done and nobody could say anything about it. All the economy went back to zero, and it started over again for another 50 years. Are you here? So Jubilee, everybody wanted to be alive during the Jubilee. Your credit card debts were canceled. Hallelujah. If you owed the phone company, they'd have to turn it back on again. I mean, if the electricity went off, they'd have to give you your electricity back. If your water went off, I'm trying to put it in today's terms, but, it, but that's what it meant. When God gave Joshua the instructions, he's saying seven times that. Seven times jubilee. Seven times one long blast. He said, and the people will shout. What are they shouting for? They're not shouting out of anger. They're not shouting out of hatred. They're shouting out of joy. Because now what happens in that moment, God is bringing them into their pers his perspective. And they're seeing what he's seeing. For the first time, they are seeing walls, they're seeing gates, they're seeing soldiers, they're seeing people shouting out profanities to them and everything else because they're Jewish. And all this other stuff is going on. That's what they see. But when God has them do this, when he has them march around the city, when they blow the seven trumpets and they begin to shout, something snapped, something happened. All of a sudden, they move from their perspective into God's perspective, and they're watching this fall. Walls just crumble and crumble. What does the walls represent? It's a fortress, but it's an, it's an obstacle to God's will and God's purpose. So when God said to me in my office, he said, he says, he says seven trumpets. Yes, we're going to blow seven trumpets. We do this on Tuesday nights now. We have seven shofar players, and we blow seven trumpets uh, in, in honor of what he said to, to Joshua. We blow a long blast, jubilee, and we're praying that the spiritual strongholds of this city be torn down. Amen. Flat. Amen. Flat. Amen. And this is what he gave me. I got so excited. I, we went out and bought three more shofars, and uh, uh, we couldn't get the, the racks anymore. I had to build them myself. So I had to build three, three sets of racks, build them myself, and put them in there. I was so excited about this word that God had given me. So it's Tuesday night. We started. Uh, we have some people that are just learning how to blow. And I said, I don't care what it sounds like. We got seven. We got seven. Make seven, no seven things that make noise. <laughs> I said, seven shofars. Whatever kind of squeak or noise you can make on that, make it. And we'll get better as we go along. But on Tuesday night, we get engaged in spiritual warfare. This is what we're doing. So what happens? We get God's perspective. You see, this isn't the first time God has said that. He went to Abraham, and he said, Abraham, he says, walk upright before me. And he went through the whole covenant thing. And he says, he says I, am, I have given you this land. He didn't say, I am going to give it to you. He said, I have given it to you. It is yours. You own it. 
and your descendants own it. Well, here's a Joshua generation that's about to possess what God said they own. It doesn't matter what man has done. It doesn't matter who's camping out on it. God himself has said, this belongs to you. You have to get that down because God's perspective is he's not going to give it to you again. He's already given it to you. So, but we have to get the perspective of where God is, stand where he's seeing, see what he sees, and hear what he's saying. When we can do that, we can own it. Are you here? The city of Key West does not belong to the cult. It doesn't belong to any, any particular group. It doesn't belong to anybody but God. I've been here 34 years preaching this thing for this reason. Because God has called me here. I wasn't born here. None of my kids were born here. I had my grandkids born here. Three of my grandkids born here. But that's it. My, we, we had nothing to do with this town other than the fact God says, come here, establish my church. First of all, he had us in a season of intercessory prayer. Interceding, praying for leadership, praying for that. We're praying for leadership, and leadership is changing. <laughs> uh, um, we're praying, we're praying uh, uh, for different, different things. I don't want to get into that this, this morning, but uh, uh, that's for another time. But we, we're praying and we're believing. And then all of a sudden, God taws, teaches us about spiritual warfare. And I'm thinking, wow, okay. We don't wrestle against people. People aren't our problem. Right. And uh, I said, no, we don't, we don't wrestle against people. I said, we, and, you know, Joshua had 12 tribes. You know, you know those 12 tribes were different people? I said, I think Covenant Word Church should be a multicultural, multiracial church. I think we should press towards that. That's not a big revelation today, but back in 1990, that wasn't going on. That wasn't happening here. Are you here? So I'm thinking about all this stuff. I'm an old man, so I can, you know, reminisce. But anyway, I'm thinking about this stuff, and God shows me seven trumpets. (laughs) Seven trumpets. (laughs) You got it. You got it. We came in here on Tuesday night. We untangled the fight. And uh, <laughs> we set up the seven trumpets. And I saw it in the eye of the Spirit. God, poof, this thing, this stronghold dis- dissipating. This ruler of darkness, poof, gone. This thing here, gone. Just like Joshua, falling down flat. Why? What does the walls represent? It doesn't say God did anything else but bring those walls down. It wasn't an earthquake, it wasn't a flood, it wasn't the sound of the shofars. They're loud, but they're not that loud. These walls were like 12 foot thick, and they used to raise chariots across the top of them. That's how big these things were. They were impenetrable. They were were an iron fortress, uh, so to speak. And and, and there's no way that man can penetrate them. You can't burn them down. You can't, I mean, today they could, but back then they didn't have explosives to, to bring it down. But so God said, no, he said, just grab a shofar. Get the priests and bring the Ark of the Covenant. So what you have is just what you see in the picture there, okay? And they line it all up, and uh, and and basically they're seeing. What are they seeing on inside of the wall? They're seeing a movement, but they're encompassing the city. You notice they didn't stop at the sixth time. Now I did a little bit of research on Jericho at the time of Joshua. Many experts believe this is what I, the numbers I came up with believes it was a city about nine acres. That means the circumference of a nine-acre city would be a roughly a half a mile. It's not very big. And inside a half a mile, oh, I, I didn't get to the inside contents yet. You're going to love this. Okay. <laughs> anyway, let me, it, about a half a mile around. You do one half a mile each day. On the seventh day, you go seven times. And on the seventh time around, the last time around, this is your final, you know, you blow jubilee. You blow jubilee. Seven with God is a number of completion. Mm-hmm. It's a number of fulfillment and completion. Mm-hmm. See, six is only the number of man. It's only fleshly. But, the, but seven is a number of completion that God is calling done. Uh, seven days to the week, so on and so forth. That finishes the week. And, anyway, but, but it, that, that's what it is. Seven times and have seven trumpets. And I and you can go through the scriptures and you will not find seven trumpets. I'm telling you, Joshua in the book of Revelation when it comes to the final day, seven trumpets is something, is something unique here. This is not a, a, the norm, okay? 
uh, mostly in the Jewish culture today, I think they blow it on Yom Kippur and some other times if they blow a single shofar in a household, they don't blow it on, the, on Shabbat, it's the Sabbath. Uh, so it's just kind of like one horn. But here we got something unique. I'm sure Joshua didn't see this before, but God spoke to him, this is my plan. If you follow my plan, you will own the city. My perspective is the city is already yours. All we have to do is remove the obstacles that keep us from going in. But the fact is, it already belongs to us. Understand that. Uh, take this world, the United States or whatever you want to have, does not belong to the governments. It belongs to God's people. Amen. It always has been. They just don't know it. Are you here? But when we get God's perspectives, we move within our, our world regardless of oppositions and strongholds and balls and everything else that goes on in our society. But as far as God is concerned, we're a free people living in a free nation that he has given us. Do you know, if you go back to your American history, you'll find out there was a Jewish group that came out of Spain, well, some came out of some other places also, and they give Christopher Columbus money so that they could find him a nation where they could worship God without persecution. And of course, he's credited for discovering America. West Indies is close enough, I guess. But anyway, he <laughs> discovered America. It was the Jewish people. Okay? It was around the 1600s when, the, when pilgrims came from another country. What did they come here for? To escape religious persecution and to be able to come to a nation that was free. Amen? That was God's plan from the beginning, and this is what he's given us a nation for. Never, never forget that, regardless of the politics and, and, and all the other stuff that goes on is garbage compared to what God has, has brought his people together. Yes. In that 12 tribes, all 12 tribes possess that city. All different, all, all different backgrounds, all different cultures, all different skin colors was in Israel at, at that time. All 12 tribes. They weren't all just Jewish. We, we call the Jew a Jew. Why? Well, because we associate with the tribe of Judah, but the tribe of Judah was only one tribe out of 12. <laughs> what about, oh, do I dare bring it up? What, what, what about Moses' group? What about, the, what, what about Joseph's group? Ephraim, Manasseh, they were jo Jacob's grandkids. Let me get to, I, I, I go on and on like this, but uh, you know, uh, all different backgrounds, all that made up an entire nation that, uh, that God had. Mm -hmm. Joseph never left Egypt. We put his flag back in the back there, and his two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, became, uh, God gave him a double portion because he sacrificed the promised land to stay in Egypt. You know what Joseph was married to? He was married to a Gentile. Mm -hmm. And he died, and he said, don't leave my bones here, carry my bones to the promised land. They did. But he was married. You know, Moses wasn't married to a Jewish woman. Right. He was married to an Arab. <laughs> Matter of fact, you go to Israel today and you'll find that Jews are the, are the one sect of Arabs that are very much in favor of Israel and, uh, and, and, uh, and support Israel. They can even fight in their military. This is how close they are. And they're descendants of Jethro. Jethro was Moses' father-in-law. Amen. Uh, I, I'm, okay, enough for the history lesson. Let's get back to what, what God is saying. So, so, but this perspective. See, when they came out of, you got to understand, when they came out of uh, uh, the east of the Jordan and they walked across, there's Jericho on the other side. There's a plain there. It's about seven miles, I think about seven miles north of the Dead Sea. Uh, uh, there's, there's a plain there all around them. The plain is called the Plain of Moab. Okay, that's, that's where, where Jericho set. When they came across, it isn't just a city that belongs to them. It's the very ground that they're standing on. The Moab, Moab were the Moabites. Are you, are you following me? Okay. Uh, um, I, don't, well, I, I, I want to get off of what I'm, what I'm saying. But anyway, uh, the Moabites is a son, was a son of Lot but it was an incestual relationship with his oldest daughter. Remember when he came out of, uh, out of Sodom? Mm -hmm. Moab grew up hating anybody that was in the seed of Abraham simply because you know, his, 
he didn't get to get in on a, on a portion. So a lot of these enemies are the same way. Here's what I found out. I, I went a little bit further in the book of Joshua, and in Joshua 24 and verse 11, there's a few chapters down, but it, it, it said this, uh, uh, then you went over Jordan and you came to Jericho. Now, what they're doing, this is the last chapter in the book of Joshua, and he's reminiscing all the things that they've been through. Joshua's still alive. He's reminiscing all the things that what God has brought him through. And, he, and God is saying, he says, when you went over to Jordan, you came to Jericho, and the men of Jericho fought against you. What do we have here? The men of Jericho fought against you, but they have no walls. God didn't fight for Joshua. He just brought the walls down so Joshua could fight. You get that? There's a spiritual principle here. God isn't doing everything for you. There's stuff that we have to do, but he's taken away the obstacles that's preventing us to do what God has called us to do, what God has ordained us to do, and what he's empowered us to do. Joshua was well empowered for, uh, to, to take on uh, this enemy. How could he be well empowered to take on this enemy? And how many enemies were there in that camp, in that city of, uh, of Jericho? I'll get to that in a minute. Do you remember when Moses came out of Egypt and, and, and he was marching along and he was bringing the children of Israel behind him and with him and all of a sudden they came up to the land of the Philistines and the Lord says, no, I'm going to bring you around the land of the Philistines. Least my people look at those Philistines and fall in fear and run back to Egypt. In other words, they're not ready for warfare. So God led them around the Philistines. Know what happened next about two months later, or they're two months into their journey. And two months into their journey, all of a sudden the Amalekites come up. And now Joshua has to fight the Amalekites. This is his first battle. This is where Moses stands on top of the hill, Aaron and her on each side of him, and he's taking his rod and he's holding it up. And as long as he held up his rod, uh, Joshua prevailed. But as the rod came down because his arms got tired, Joshua began to lose. That was Joshua's first encounter of a battle. So he's battle ready at that time. What happened from the time that he couldn't confront the Philistines, but he could confront the Amalekites? They grew up. They grew to a place to where now they can be stand and fight, and God could use them in that, in that particular engagement. And he was showing them right then. There was a time period in which they had to get used to what they were doing. They had to listen to the word of God, but then they grew to a place to where now they can take on the warfare that God is for. Do you, listen to this. This is, the, I started with Joshua 24. Joshua 24, 11, it says this, you went up over Jordan, you came to Jericho, and all the men of Jericho fought against you. Also, listen to this, Amorites, uh, the Perizzites, the uh, Canaanites, there's a lot of ites, uh, the Hittites, the, uh, uh, I don't, I'm going to mess this one up, but anyway, here, I'll do it my best I can. The Gershites, <laughs> the Hivites, and the Jebusites. How many is that? Was anybody counting? How many shofars we have? How many enemies we have? The enemy started to set the number of completion, which is God's number, by the way, is what he's said for completion. The enemy tried to set up, in other words, this is our final. We have seven armies here behind the walls of Jericho. Joshua came in and he took all seven armies. Those were all the representatives of the entire land of Canaan he took at the first battle. <laughs> Why was this important? Why was this so important? What, what's, what's the difference? Because basically God was saying, take nothing from the city. The spoils of war do not belong to you. They belong to me. This is the first encounter in the promised land. But in that first encounter, you are going to send a message to everybody that lives there that this, I have given you this land. You see, the whole rule was, is whose God's going to prevail here? Because all the names I mentioned worship different gods. They worship different idols and so on and so forth. So basically, who's God's going to win here? What God did when they, when they, were, what they didn't realize when they were blowing the shofars, they were blowing judgment on all the gods, the Hittites, the Jebusites, and all the other, other ites. And God was using the, 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 the sound of their shofars to pass judgment upon those gods that they were worshiping and then besides that, it crumbled the very fortress that they actually worshipped. 
in Jericho. Matter of fact, it was so bad, God says, do not rebuild this city and do not rebuild the walls or you will pay for the walls with the death of your firstborn. It was a curse upon it when they got done. Amen? So I'm thinking, whoa, there's a lot in here if we unfold it all. There's a lot in here. Amen? But the whole idea and the whole perspective of this thing is the fact is that, well, let me bring it up to today. What, what does that mean for us today? It's a good history lesson, Pastor, but what does it bring up today? It brings up today, it, we need to get a hold of God's perspective and start living it. Amen. Not what we think it is, not what, we, what theology we have or so on and so forth, but actually what God has said. Uh, theology is nice in part, but, but basically it becomes, open, it becomes man's theory. What a lot of theology has birthed from is man unable to explain God's miraculous. I got news for you. I got news for everybody. Uh, the fact is, is God's going to have a whole lot of things you're not going to be able to explain. But I always said that, I say this to, to our people. I say, I say you, you need to learn how to live with a little bit of mystery in your life because God is bigger than, than, than we can even wrap our minds around. And so, so, so let's get used to it. But the fact is, he does say what he means, and he means what he says in his word. And a person asked me one time, well, isn't, there, isn't the Bible full of contradictions? Not as many as in you. <laughs> isn't it amazing? A church, a church that, that worries about contradictions in the Bible contradict the very life they live. One foot in the world and one foot in the church. You know what I'm talking about. But, uh, so, so, so praise the Lord. Amen? So No, there's not. The fact is there's a lack of understanding and there's some things that God has placed in there that are higher than uh, we wrap our mind around. How can he say, Joshua, see? See, Joshua, I've given you the city. What's he seeing? I'm seeing a wall. No, 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 no. You're not seeing what I'm seeing. Okay, just for a minute, see past the wall. See you in the wall. See you taking over Jericho. See you going to AI. See yourself one by one. Mm -hmm. Joshua did a pretty good job until it came to the Jebusites. He conquered the Jebusites, okay, in Jericho. The Jebusites were, were in a place, and the Jebusites were never conquered until King David came along. See, Jebusites was in the mountains of Salem, which today is known as Jerusalem. And now Jerusalem is where the Jebusites had a stronghold. So when David conquered Goliath and he's outside the gates, remember it said he took the head of Goliath to Jerusalem? Jerusalem wasn't the capital. What was David doing? David was doing what God said to do. See what I see, I've given you the city. Amen. And he took the head of the giant and he held it up. What was he saying? You're next. You're next. And they laughed at him, and they mocked him. They put their old men up on the wall and said, we can fortify our city. It's like they didn't learn anything in Jericho. We can fortify our city with just these guys here. Oh, give us your best shot. You're just a kid. Get out of here, you snot nose. We don't, or whatever they said, you know. But I said, this is, you, you're not going to be able to do nothing. David came in in his reign. He came in and he, with a group of men, and he went up to the, cist he went up to the cistern, uh, not, uh, the, um, the pool at the end of the city, and up to Hezekiah, what they call Hezekiah's tunnel. But there was a tunnel system, a natural spring flowed underneath the city. But at that time, they built it dumb. They had the pool on the outside of the city. They'd have to come outside, march up, and, and get their water. Yeah. The enemy could easily poison their well because it was exposed to the outside. David used those tunnels and went up and seized the city from the inside. He never had to preach their gates or anything. And Joshua didn't, never, uh, never got accomplished that in his time. So David freed in, uh, all of the Canaan land from the Canaanites, and they now possessed all the land. Understand something when you read this. There was a provision that anybody that wanted to live at peace with Israel, Israel would not touch. In other words, you could live. You could have your own home. You could do whatever you want. They were only contracted to take out the enemies that were trying to kill them. Kind of, kind of familiar on the news. I mean, basically, uh, uh, you can live in Palestine, but leave us alone. You come over and kill us, guess what? It's war. Mm -hmm. And justly so, and God will back it. Amen. Make no mistake about it, he will back it. 
and the land that they do now possess today, they do possess it. Matter of fact, more than what they have now. It's been reduced if you read the Bible. Because it had to be reduced because basically it takes in part of uh, 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 East Jordan. <laughs> All the Golan Heights and Gaza Strip, it belongs to them. Matter of fact, good old Harry Truman back in the, when he was president, he, with the League of Nations, he was trying to talk to League, give them all the way to the Suez Canal, just like the Bible says. And it was England that was ki kicking against it and had a fit about it and, uh, because they were an anti-Semite nation, anti-Semitic, uh, along with France and Spain and uh, most of Europe. Praise the Lord. Uh, so anyway, so that brings you up to, to the, today's uh, standard. What's my point of my message this morning? The shofar itself is, is a coup to a horn. <laughs> Matter of fact, the shofars you see there are basically Yemenite so, shofars from Israel, but they come from, uh, they call them Yemenite because the kudu was prevalent in Yemenite during Bible times. And a kudu is like a big ram. Uh, they're a clean animal. They, can, they, they have a cloven hoof. They chew a cut and they can uh, uh, blow them. A, a Jewish person can't put his lips uh, to... Um, to anything that's unclean. Okay, so basically you had to have a cloven hoof and chew a cud. So those are kudu horns. You see the shorter horns, I don't have mine here right now, but uh, the ram's horns uh, were more prevalent. Uh, it's okay, Jennifer, uh, I'm almost done. But uh, more prevalent, would you see? So they're different shapes and styles. What does it mean? It doesn't mean anything because basically God calls a trumpet a trumpet, a shofar a shofar. So praise the Lord. Understand this, though, church, as we gather here on Tuesday nights and we blow the shofar, uh, understand um, on Tuesday nights what we're doing is we're coming against the things and the opposition that's coming against you. God has given you a purpose. Everybody in this room has a purpose given by God. Everybody. Doesn't matter age or whatever, has a purpose. Amen. And in that purpose, there are certain things that God has, has laid upon our hearts. And what happens is we look a lot at a lot of these things, and I mean, I don't see how it's possible. Do you know right now the chair you're sitting in, according to a lot of people in Key West, is impossible for you to be sitting here? Because this isn't supposed to exist. And when I gave, gave the vision for Lighthouse Christian Academy, they said, you'll never, you'll never do it. You won't, you'll never succeed. I had more you'll never succeed over the last... Uh, well, Lighthouse is, and this building is only... We've been here 25 years in this building... But uh, 34 years, this may be 34 years overall, and just had rental facilities and stuff all over the city. Amen? Uh, because people said we couldn't do it. You can't have a church, a word church is what we are. We believe the Bible from cover to cover. We preach the word, and everything's in the word. It, we, we translate. You can't have a word church in Key West because Key West only has denominational churches, is what I was told back in 1990. But we're still here. Why? It doesn't matter how big the walls are that's in your life that's trying to stop you. It only matters what you listen to God, and he will give you the plan for the walls. Amen. But you have to see what he sees. And this is not easy a lot of times because we're inundated with all kinds of information that's useless. Okay? We have our own little rebellions and our own little things that we want to do, and they, 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 they trip and stumble us and get us in the way a lot of times. Uh, um, but... Uh, uh, my wife and I in Key West, people say, well, you can't live here. It's too expensive. Uh, we live here. God has provided a way for us to be here. Amen. And the house is paid for. Um, once a week, I get to go scuba diving. I don't know about you, but I have fun on this island too. Amen. Oh, is that God also? Absolutely. You think I'm going to go 140 feet, 150 feet under the ocean and not have God with me? <laughs> I may be a little wild, but I ain't crazy. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Absolutely. We get the wrong idea about God because we don't see from his perspective. We don't see, do we see ourselves as sons and daughters of him? And this is what I want, I'd like to be able to change over the years I got left on this planet. But understand this, the most key information that we've ever gotten in this church ever, the most revelation we've ever gotten was a revelation that he is present right here. Something that we should have known all along. But it, when it came to me as a revelation revealed, it became something different. No, he's really here. 
no, he is here. I can feel him. I can listen to him. I can talk to him. That became something else. And with that, with the Father, I connected with the Father in such a way, you have no idea what love is. I don't have any idea what love is. But boy, when you connect to the Father and he gives you that glimpse, see, I've given you the city. See, I've given you the city. Yeah, you have. You've given us a city. You've given me a marriage that's lasted for 52 years. Diane and I have never been married to anybody else, just us. 52 years. We've raised kid, two kids and four grandchildren, and, 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 and we, we've seen these things. We've had difficulties. We've had sorrows. We've had problems in a lifetime. And I'll go to God with each one of them. I say, Lord, what do I do? He says, give it to me and let me turn it around. And what God has showed me in, the past, in, in just recent uh, times, he's shown, he said, there's a whole generation that's coming up that doesn't know me. They don't know how to act in front of me. They don't know, understand me. He says, train them. And I say, yeah, I feel like a Caleb and a Joshua generation. Let me bring that phrase up, and I'll end with this. Which generation do you want to belong to? Maintenance and maintain? Or do you want to, or do you want to be a Joshua generation? One of them is steep in selfishness Amen. and self-centeredness. The other gets the heart of God. Amen. I'll let you determine which one. <laughs> But you can't have both. Amen. You can't be a maintaining type of person and also be a conquering type of person that, that, that possesses what God has promised. God has promised us divine health. He has promised us healing. He's, those are the things just for us. He's also promised us an affirmable force against the powers of darkness of this, of this world that we can conquer it. Are you here with the power of him? Are we, are we interested in that? Or are we just interested in getting around the same mountain for the next 40 years and complain and complain well I'm off my notes praise the Lord if I, if I go any further I'll be um, prophesying stuff you don't want to hear <laughs> but praise the Lord how many got something out of the message this morning yeah. hallelujah uh, you'll probably hear me season each message with some of the stuff in review of this thing but uh, this is this is exciting to me. This just opened up for me. So I'm like a kid with a new toy. I know it's not a toy, but I mean, I'm, I'm just, I'm excited about this stuff. When God speaks to me like this, and man, a show, seven shofar, shoot, why not 70 times seven? <laughs> I could line the walls in shofars. <laughs> if God says shofars, if God says rocks, well, hey, we bring some rocks in here. We'll put some cushions on. We'll use them for chairs. <laughs> But I, whatever God says something, uh, a, f a few years ago, we, we, we had the nation, nation flags up there. I've been to, actually, I preached the gospel on five different continents. I've been all around the world. And uh, we had the nation's flags up there until one time uh, we found out that a lot of the nation's flags that we were representing were anti-Semites. And uh, understand something, God said, uh, Ab God said this to Abraham. He said, I'll bless him that bless you and I'll curse him that curse you. Amen. I shared this last night. Pray for our nation because any back turning on Israel can end this nation in a hurry. If you don't believe me, look at your history. Roman, from the Roman Empire to the uh, fascist regime of the Nazi Germany, they don't exist because they came against the Jew. You know, Spain was one of a, a, a world power at one time until the Spanish Inquisition. The Spanish Inquisition was all about trying to get the Jew to change the, the Christianity. Uh, my, my brother-in-law's family was part of that in his ancestry. And, uh, and they were exiled from Spain to, um, uh, to Turkey, and from Turkey to Israel, and Israel became a nation of 48. Amen? Amen. So praise the Lord. Uh, God is God is moving, but study your history. Nobody that curses Israel ever survives because of God's word. Not because of Israel and what they do, because some of them are just like in this country, they're unbelievers and stuff like that. No, but the fact is, is God said to Abraham, and what Joshua got his victory on was the word God gave to Abraham. Let's stand on our feet and I'll pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, this morning I thank you for listening ears and a heart to receive what the Spirit of the Lord is saying, not what a preacher is saying or, or, or my ideas of a, of a verse of Scripture, none of that. 
But Lord, what you are speaking directly to the hearts of your people this morning in whichever way, shape, fashion that they need to hear it. Father, even the ones that listen to the live stream, we're so thankful for the people that watch us by live stream all around the world. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. But Lord, speak to their hearts. This is a day and hour. We feel the presence of God. We feel your move upon us in this day and hour, Lord. We don't want to miss it. And we don't want to miss it. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you praise. And we thank you for it in Jesus' mighty name. Just a side note. I don't know if you've heard of Ashbury, Kentucky. It's where a revival.